Hello, hello, I'm Stefan. In this video, I do want to go through all the key elements in Darkest Dungeon 2 and hopefully help you decide if you want to buy the game or not, if you haven't already. I hope you enjoy the video and please tell me what you think of the game if you play it or if you plan to buy it. First thing I want to talk about is the fact that it doesn't really matter if you played the first one in the sequel or you didn't. The combat is very similar uh, for those who played it already, but it will not matter as you will get too used to it uh, as you go through it. As you get to the main menu, we will probably wonder where are the options. If you just press escape, you will have all the options right here. The first thing I do want to touch here is the token glossary, which basically I call it the buff and debuff uh, explanations. They call it tokens in Dun Darkest Dungeon 2. I don't know why, but they're just buffs and debuffs and statuses. Uh, you can read all about them right here. Also, every little thing that you will go through first, you will find here in the pause menu in the tutorials. So everything has a bit of explanation. So when you trigger it for the first time, it will pop up here and you will be able to read about things again and again. Uh, the devs said that the game takes roughly 50 hours to beat every single boss. And I can concur that I've already been playing for about 10 hours, 11 hours maybe, until I managed to defeat the first one. And uh, I can show you the battle right here. But bear in mind that you have to play and fail, play and fail until you actually get the battle done. But enjoy the battle and then we will go to the Altar of Hope. Beyond only infernal nihility and non-existence. The mind must be freed of its self-imposed incarceration. At last, the world's mind is free to remember a time before the cancerous corruption. Now that you've watched that battle, uh, again, it took me quite a bit to get that. I had to make a lot of upgrades uh, and do the runs over and over again until I managed to have a crew that uh, would help me defeat it. So every time you fail, I say air quotes fail because you don't really fail, you will get to the Altar of Hope. 
And in the Altar of Hope, you will be able to spend all the candles that you've gathered. So in the Intrepid Coast, uh, you can do upgrades for the carriage uh, and companions and so on. So each of them will cost a number of candles. So for example, the carriage uh, journey upgrades are a total of 94 candles. So that's why you have to play over and over again. And it will give you bonuses that will just help you throughout the journey. So this <clears throat> is the Intrepid Coast. And the Living City is basically where you upgrade your her heroes. Uh, I do have the first four. These are unlocked uh, as standard. And I do have the first four unlocked. Um, but then you can unlock more and you will be able to upgrade as you go. A really little thing, uh, nugget that you really want to know is that if you unlock them, if you lose one of these, throughout the journey you will be able to get a random one in your crew, which can help you continue your journey. So be sure to try to unlock as many as possible. In the working fields, you can spend candles to get items. So recollection is 40 out of 165. So basically you unlock items, trinkets that are used on your heroes, combat items that are usable in battles, stagecoach items, which are items that you can put on your carriage and in items are things that you can consume when you reach an inn. You can go through all of these using this menu. Or you can just click on them as this and you can also check all the items you have had in your inventory at least once. This is a good practice to look at them just to know what you might want to keep when you find them so you can plan out a strategy. After you are done with the Altar of Hope you will get to the picking of levels and to the crossroads. At the crossroads basically so in here at this little house uh you will choose which of the levels you want to play so you can replay your initial chapter or if you want to go for the second boss uh you will go for the second boss okay and then you have to accept the legal turn after you did choose the chapter you want to go you will get you'll get to meet it with the crossroads in here, the things get a bit more complex. So here are all the heroes that I've unlocked. You want to select, you can do a random party. Just puts it whatever you want and you can check them after. But I prefer not to do a random party. The starting point that I did was this, this, this and this. But more than that, you can go on each one of them and you can look at what they can do so in terms of skills you can activate or deactivate the skills from here but you can also deactivate them or activate them when you're in the stagecoach and i will show you that after we're finished with this section so you can just click and select which of the skills you want to select for them the quirks you don't um control but you can look at what they have so you can understand what you have to play uh with and then you have a path these paths unlock when you do the story each of them have more stories and you can unlock them at the hero shrines here's a look at how a story can look like uh for two of the heroes and then i'll take you to the uh, selecting of skills inside the actual run.
He would be a fugitive, a hunted man, but a free one nonetheless. Professor was a relic, hacking and wheezing his way through a hopelessly conventional curriculum. Now that you've watched how the hero shrine works and how the story uh, develops for some of the champions, this is basically your AGD. On your top right, uh, left, you have the wheels that can be affected by certain things on the road and you have the armor. Again, you will see those on your map. M is for the map, so you can open it using your keyboard or clicking on it. Then you have goals and conditions, so each of your heroes will have certain goal for the maps i think it's really really good to try to achieve them because they give you candles and they make your heroes happy so that's g standard then there's your inventory which is default i and you will be able to look at all the items or combat or trinkets or whatnot and then you have the stage coach again you can see what items you have equipped right here we can talk about the equipping items uh in a second thing but what i wanted to show here was uh putting or uh disabling some skills and enabling others so basically if you you said oh i i forgot i didn't want to have that skill you go in one of the heroes tabs and you can just click it and select the one you wanted anyway before a battle starts i'm gonna go towards the inn and i'll try to explain a bit of what the inn is about but basically your heroes need some rest and you need to also activate your mastery skills so we've just reached the inn and i will go through the menu in the end and see what it's like in here you have all these things at the bottom so you can end your expedition right now if you want to just go back and spend your candles you can do that at the end you have the provisioner tab in which you can buy items when you fail more than once i mean a few times you will get the radiant flame which is basically a very a uh, helpful item i would say try to beat the game without this uh and then use it just to see how it is i haven't used it yet but this goes on the carriage also if you unlock the pets earlier you can use them and they will give you a bonus the way to equip a pet is you take it from the inn you put it in your inventory and then you have to go to your coach the pet goes here i was trying i was trying and maybe some of you will try that too if you didn't see this because it says equip a pet and i was trying to equip it here it doesn't work that way you just have to go it, put it here and then you accept it being here so that gives you a bonus it can calm besides that on this one you can equip a trophy which is found in uh, after defeating a lair boss and other stagecoach items that give you a bonus on the run on the mastery 
trainer, basically you will get a few mastery points after each successful reach of an inn, and you will want to upgrade the skills that you use the most, or according to what you plan to uh, play it like. You can see what the skill will give you under the second line before actually taking that skill. Okay? And when you are done, you then go and select your route and you go to war. A few other things to note on the map. On the map you will have paths, right? So you now have a path on your left side. You can pick your path and look at how things can develop for you. Some of them are unknown, some of them you already know. It will make more sense the more you play. But these will take one of the wheels because I was talking about this earlier. This will take one of the wheels. This will take one of the armor. When you are at zero and you encounter one of these, you will have to have a battle. During that battle, one of your character at random will have to repair instead of attack. So you will basically fight with one character but it's random. Each round, a different one. You pick a path, you go for it. Let's pick the hospital path, for example. Because it has a candle, I recommend going for the candle as many times as you can. You will see things on the road. The first instinct for you will be to avoid it. But you, I recommend not to avoid them because they can give you uh, items. So just hit all the things on the road as they might be beneficial rather than not. Unless there's a thing that is signaled like this, uh, it will not actually damage your carriage. One aspect about the battle that is pretty important is how much light you have. So as high as possible, keep it uh, lit because that way you get the bonuses and they have uh, debuffs. If this light goes down, your heroes will have the debuff and the enemies will have the buff. On top of that, you can look uh, at each and one of them. If you click uh, with the mouse wheel on the character, you can see exactly what resistances it has, what kind of attacks uh, they do and what kind of statuses they have. Also, you can see the bleeds or the blights on top of the health bar as well you can also hover on the hp bar to see what hp it has you can move your characters you can pass your round for that character and i think and on top right you see the order of the character so in case you wondered who is going to be next you can look here and you will see who is going to be the next character that will have to make a move remember it's a turn base game Thank you so, so much for watching. Please leave a comment if you enjoy these kind of videos or if you have anything to say about the things that we've discussed. Please bear in mind that I do try to stream these games on Twitch before actually making a review. Every Thursday I am live on Twitch uh, with a new game, hopefully. I will try to post a video of Redfall in the same format next week and I will stream that gameplay video on Thursday the following week. Also, drop a subscribe. It's free and it will help me grow and you can stay up to date to other games like this. And if you do want to see the VOD before I actually made this video, Please click on the video above as I will upload the VODs of the actual gameplay in YouTube as well. Thank you and hope to see you next time.